Um, uh, today I'm going to talk about my ideas and thoughts about labels from my experience in life and my lens on the world. Um, you may prefer to use labels in your life for yourself or others. And I'm not saying everyone has to see this from my standpoint and everyone um, is free to use labels for yourself or in whichever way is true for you. Um, so labels, do they divide us? Labels belong on food containers. Uh, I can say this because I've been a dietitian for decades, and I remember when food containers did not have labels. Um, so we, our, us, are words that are uniting in, in their meaning and intent. My, me, mine, theirs, them often denote a kind of separation. In most spiritual circles, we humans are all one. I will go even further to say that this includes the natural world, bees, soil, trees, oceans, rivers. Um, or as one of my favorite Peter Mayer's song says, all the world is one. So I first started thinking about labels um, when I started calling myself a vegetarian. And that was, well, was circa 1990s, many years ago. And I would proudly tell my friends or anybody else who was listening when we were talking health or nutrition that I was a vegetarian. But then every now and again, I got a craving for a nice juicy cheeseburger. <laughs> And so, like, I had a dilemma. Do I go get a cheeseburger and eat it in secret? Or do I change that vegetarian label that really wasn't true for me at that time? <laughs> so I had to think of a new label because the vegetarian one was not working for me. Um, so I was a person who preferred to eat meatless meals, but every now and then the craving hit. Um, th so this is when I first started thinking about the limiting uh, thing that how labels are or were for me. So the label vegetarian said nothing more to me or said nothing more about me, except I was not a meat eater. It didn't explain my opinion on how meat was produced in the U.S. or how the water demand needed. It also didn't explain my belief that humans can survive without meat if as long as they complement their plant proteins. So all of this influenced my decision not to eat meat. So all that aside, how it separated me from the meat eater was, that I was talking to, the meat eater would invariably say or maybe think to themselves, oh, you are so healthy and I'm not. Or, why would you want to do a stupid thing like that? Or, I grew up on a cattle farm, and my parents were able to put me through college because of that. <laughs> or, are you saying that I have to be vegetarian too? So, can you see how, like, wh how I was looking at it, this vegetarian label I was touting was like putting a divide between me and the person I was talking to. Um. Another label, I, I used to call myself a feminist and support the National Organization of Women. And I, I believe in equal rights and all of that. For you know, I am totally um, feminist probably in my thinking. But sometime in the 90s, going back to the 90s again, when this labeling, I was thinking about it, um, the National Organization for women came out with a statement, um, like a position statement, and it discredited breastfeeding. And I was like, that got my attention because I'm also lactation consultant and it's one of my passions. And I'm like, I can't call myself a feminist if this organization is dissing breastfeeding. So it was just another example of how labeling um, for myself like wasn't working for me. Um, and I did try to look up on the internet um, what they said, what the National Organization of Women said, and I couldn't find it. it. So I don't know if it's not, it wasn't archived or I'm just not tech savvy enough to find it. 
Um, another personal example is my son, Jundu. Now, I could talk about him as my adopted black son. Those are accurate labels, but if you know Jundu, it says nothing really about him. Um, it says nothing of his love for dirt biking and his love for his dog, Chance, who he, ha he has such a way with. It says nothing of his perspective on the world, being raised in a multilingual home by a Pakistani dad and American mom. There's more labels I'm adding. Yes, he is black, and he has experienced racism in his short 20 years. And yes, he has biological parents he has not yet chosen to meet. But right or wrong, those things are not what his dad and I focused on throughout his life. So it's become common today for people to introduce themselves with one or more adjectives. And I feel like our personal labels come from a sense of pride in ourselves. Our society functions best when, we, when all of us, uniting word, feel worthy of being present and participating. Because of my experience examining my own labels, I often think to myself, I wonder what else makes this person who they are. This is just me trying to make sense of this current time I find myself in. It's only my perspective after living on this planet for 68 years. And please know I'm open to hearing other people's perspectives too. I just described labeling from the inside out, where someone puts a label on themselves, but there's also labeling from the outside in and where someone assigns a label to another person, either out loud or to themselves. And this kind of labeling, I believe, usually stems from inner prejudices. So David Brooks, who's a New York Times journalist and famous commentator, has said that people become invisible when we put a label on them, that we only see that label. And how I look at his idea is that we can be tunnel visioned on the label. And it may, you know, maybe a positive tunnel vision focus, or it could be a negative tunnel vision focus, but we're negating or ignoring the entirety of that person. A one-dimensional view, I feel, of a multi-dimensional human. And we are all, I believe, multi-dimensional. Um, so let's take a most recent example of the current presidential candidate, Kamala Harris, a Black Asian woman. To me, that feels like really limiting label. The more I've heard about her and read about her lately because of her notoriety now that she's the presidential candidate, um, one of her former co-workers in California, Latifah Simon, who was a San Francisco district attorney that worked with her, um, talked about her or talked about uh, president, vice presidential um, candidate Harris. When they were working together, she talked of a boss who welcomed her children into the office after school hours. And Prosecutor Harris at the, that time, Prosecutor Harris insisted that the kids come into her office so she could be like part of their life. Um, so now, in my opinion, like that has nothing to do with her being black or Asian. It has to do with her being a compassionate human who cared about her coworkers' uh, upbringing of her children, and I would guess of all society's children. Another personal example in the political arena happened when I was working the 2020 election. I was assigned to a precinct that was known for having much support of the candidate I did not want to win. My initial prejudice was to think of this candidate's supporters as jerks, another label. <laughs> Nobody came into the building with names on their hats or their t-shirts. I could have labeled them all candidate X's supporters and made assumptions from my judgment. But a little voice in my head said, Debbie, they're all human first. Human, there's a label. <laughs> And, and fellow citizens who have a right to exercise their right to vote in this democracy. 
So that is how I proceeded with that day. And I was able to, to see the good in everybody that came in or in my fellow citizens. I wasn't thinking like, how can you support that candidate? Or you must have the IQ of uh, whatever. Um, they were fellow citizens um, who came to exercise their political right to vote. And I actually had very many positive experiences that day when I changed the way I looked at people. Um, I had human to human interactions that day. So in conclusion, I guess I would say we live in a democracy where everyone is needed to participate, regardless of labels placed on them by themselves or by others. It seems to me if we can work together as one, rather than seeing ourselves divided as us and them, we can get more accomplished and live in better harmony.